you watch last week's video on restoring the 1950 pan head, then you know that when we checked all the date codes and the casting codes on the engine, that the top end, although being matching castings, they're from 1952 and the bottom end is 1950. So I've got the transmission here. Let's check the date codes on it. All right, let's go ahead. Right here is the date code. And as we see, that is a, it was a eight zero. So that's 1950 and it's August of 1950. And really, if you look at this, these cases, they're in excellent shape. You can still see some machining marks. So those are in good shape. Let's go check out the frame. All right, now there's a couple of things I noticed right out the gate. The the first one is the toolbox mount. You know, that come out like that in 52. Everything before that was vertical. Now they did change in late 52 to this heavier upper motor mount bracket. And in late 53, they put a stamping. They started stamping the date marking right here. That's not there. So we know that this for sure is late 52, early 53. And then right here, these inventions, they didn't start doing that until 52. So, I mean, this is kind of opening up some of the, uh, the history that we're trying to figure out. So let's get in the shop. Let's take a look at a few other things like the Speedo. See what else we can figure out. Now, I mean, you can see how scorched up it is from the fire, uh, even the glass busted, you know, it's hot and throwing water on there. But one of the things that I noticed when I picked the bike up is that this is a 1953 Speedo. And it's an original Harley Davidson 1953 Speedo, which I will rebuild it. I've done several of them, which makes it kind of a semi-original. It'll be a uh, original that's rebuilt, but... I mean, you can even see the original wiring. That's what caused the problem. Anyhow, so let's go ahead and take a look at the front fork tins. Let's see if they're correct. Now, correct for the 1950 model year is these horizontal ribs, which this shows that, yeah, it's, it's correct for the year. It had the hydroglide on the top, which they quit putting that on there a few years later. And the cowbells are stainless, just like they're supposed to be. So is the uh, fork covers. And which is kind of good because if they had been chrome, then they would have been more prone after the fire because of how hot they got to uh, corrosion. And it's a heck of a lot harder when, you know, chrome wants to peel when you start trying to buff it on a, you know, a, a high powered buffing wheel. But this being stainless, I can make these, both of these look brand new again. So let's take a look at the triple trees. All right, so we're taking a look at the lower triple trees. It's got the welded stem like it's supposed to. I double checked and all the, the bolt holes are the correct size with the thread pitch like it's supposed to. So we know that that would have been on a 1950. And the upper has the correct part number cast into it. So we know that would have been on a 1950. Y'all also can, all can see all the fire damage from when the fire happened. I'm really lucky we were able to save as much as we did. Now, let's take a look at the carburetor. And it's a M36A, which is correct from 1950. And you can even still see some of the, they painted them black back then, and you can still see some of it on there. Most of it burned off. But anyway, so let me tell y'all what my hypothesis is. And y'all leave a comment if y'all have a different idea, maybe you know, y'all know something that I'm missing, but I feel like, but due to the fact that the left gas tank was damaged pretty bad. Now, when the, the fire burned the paint off, I saw the Bondo and stuff on there and how deep the Bondo was. So I got all that off. I cut this, the uh, weld seam, worked the dents out and welded it back on. All that's at the painter, so we can't look at that. But all the sheet metal is 1950. And so, what I think is this. I think that the bike is a, a, a one owner, original one owner. I think that back when he bought it in maybe late 52, early 53, I think he had a wreck. And I think the, the frame got damaged and I think that the either the fins on the top end or you know something happened to the top end 
and they would have replaced it back then with what had just come brand new from the factory, what they could order from the factory that would have been cast recently or fabricated recently to when that accident happened. So it stands a reason we got castings that they were cast in 52, but remember they cast the products, the parts, before the actual year that it's going to go into production. You know, they got to have their parts, they build the bikes, then they put out that, that uh, production year. So it's got castings that would have been available in early 53 if something would have had to be replaced or ordered or whatever. The frame is an early 53. It would have been made in late 52 to early 53, so it stands to reason. So, being that all the other parts on the bike from the floorboards and the tail light and the wiring harness and all this other stuff matches 1950, what it should have been, and it's all Harley Davidson, other than those connecting rods, I have yet gone through all the parts to find the aftermarket. And so, I feel like it had a wreck and it was an original owner. You know, I can never ask the guy, now he's dead, but uh, it was an original owner and that it was repaired at a dealership with correct factory parts that would have been available at that time. So, like I said, that's what I think. Y'all leave comments below. Make sure you subscribe because we're going to start the restoration process and if y'all want to watch videos of me doing that, you know, hit the link, hit the bell, hit the thumbs up, whatever you got to hit. I'm going to go get a beer because I'm tired as hell. I'll see y'all in the next one.